and welcome to First United Methodist Church, July 24, 2022. We are going to start this morning with Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. It's 57 in our hymnal. I invite you to stand. which is on page 380. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus, 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 sweetest 
bunches of people here today, and I'm so happy. Okay, first things first, birthdays. Novice Cox's birthday is July the 25th. Wendy Merkel, stand up, it's your lucky day. <laughs> Happy birthday on July 28th, and Wendy Ross, July 29th. Who else has a birthday we don't know about? Okay, let's sing happy birthday to Wendy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. church family and our church, the love and faithfulness of our Lord. And Donna Hall always says, thanks for the prayers. Okay, here are our prayers for the Lewis family. Brant was buried yesterday. It was a lovely service. Amy Rucker, lumpectomy, Marsha Batson, shoulder surgery and recovery. Has anybody heard from Marsha? I'll check her on this afternoon. All right, Don Shannon, how'd you do? Okay, good deal. We're glad that's over. All right, Sarah Lundy, you're having surgery again when? August 1st. August 1st. And so, uh, Nancy, are you having surgery? I'm ha I'm having eye surgery on August first. Okay, Carolyn Bryce, she's doing better. I saw her. She had known as Pee Wee. She had um, uh, to go to the doctor and find out if she has to have a stent. I haven't seen her since. Okay, Gail Huffines is doing better. Jack Mayo. Pam Harris is on home health. Tammy Massey Rice. I saw her husband the other day in the grocery store, and he said she's doing better. Ernestine. Mary Ann Caldwell. Anybody know? She's better. Okay. Paul and Emma Hurst. It was doing better. And Linda Liss. She's fine. Uh, Jackie Watson, I asked her the other day at the share shop how her daddy's doing. She said, good. I don't know about Carl Dixon. Okay. Y'all do some checking. Prayers for those we lost this week, as in Brant Lewis. Y'all be good with that family. They're going through a lot. Um, speaking, going through a lot. Misty, it's good to see you and your daughter. Uh, prayers for those on Homebound. Mary Fuller, Conrad Steetenroth, Margie and Tim uh, Mitchell, and Melinda Blair. Anybody else we need to add to our list? She's the little girl. And uh, Grace and Ben got to come home yesterday. Good. Uh, the younger girl's the one that had the accident where uh, another um, young woman was killed. Okay. Anybody else to add to this list? Uh, you know what, Cal and Connor know me? Y'all pray for Noah. He's got a lot to go through. He was at that service yesterday in a wheelchair. Okay. Coming up on the 21st, Administrative Council meeting. 
following the service. Next week is a covered dish. And I know some people are going, why do we have to sign up? Because we need to know if we got enough stuff to go around. And if you're planning on being at church next Sunday, put something down because we always need a salad. We always need bread. Uh, we've got the ice and I'm ordering chicken. Anything else? Okay. Also, Novice Cox's new address is 901 North Main Street in Dayton, Texas. 77535 and if you didn't get this now i'll give it to you after church uh the west district future discernment task force is meeting saturday august 13th at 2 30 at christ church and college station the annual west district hymn sing is august 21st 6 to 7 30 at christ church and college station we also have prayers for those on the long-term list. They are Jana Wilson, Tracy Bean, Jerry Grimes, uh, Shirley Bilson, Lana Wells. Lana, Lana, Lana says, no, tell them, tell them why. Okay. Aaron Martin, Tammy De La Garza's mom, Fred Bruce, and Allie Harris. Does anybody need to be added to this list? Okay, and of course, prayers for those on the homebound list are Mary Fuller, Conrad, Marge, and Tim Mitchell, and Melinda Blair. Y'all start saving up school supply money so you can help those kids going back to school. Well, and, and Madison Light is one of our new coaches and teachers, that, and we got, that's a real joy for us. Wow. Hello. <laughs> well, her sister, her active sister is coming back, and we're excited about that. That's and good. We need to get those classrooms set up in style, so y'all be sure and, you know, add some school supplies for, for those new teachers. Up and coming new teacher. Yeah. She'll be teaching right down the hall from her mom. I love it. <laughs> Anything else before we leave? Okay, have a good week. Oh, here's a note. Katie's Garden Visionary Committee meetings, August the 7th in the parlor after church. Yes, sir? Let's, uh, let's bow for prayer. Lord God, as we come to you in prayer, we thank you for the time that you give to us. The months, the weeks, the hours, the minutes. Help us, Lord God, to live every moment of our life for you. Help us to use the gifts that you give to us, the calling that you place on our lives, so that at each moment we may be in service to you, loving others, being witnesses, to the good news of Jesus Christ, so that people who right now do not know you will come to know you because of the work that we do, because of our witness. We pray all this in Jesus' name as we join in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join now in our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Reading from God's Holy Word out of Luke chapter 18. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, 
What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You should not bear false witness. Honor your mother and father. This is the word of God written for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand and let's join now in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet at 601 in the hymnal. Bible School. Uh, we worked with First Baptist Church last week and uh, had Vacation Bible School over at First Baptist. I'm just grateful to all of those who helped, both from our congregation here and from the, uh, the Flynn congregation. What a wonderful opportunity Vacation Bible School is for, for us, for our community, to help and share the good news of Jesus Christ with, the, with these little ones who came with the uh, youth and the adults who were also there, and uh, we did have a we did have a good time over there. So thanks to all who helped us uh, there. So we are uh, continuing our uh, series about being ready to be witnesses to the good news of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to focus a little bit on a question that we're instructed to be ready to uh, answer. And I'm going to start, I read here that a few years ago, or some years ago, uh, a Stanford professor devised a checklist of questions that can be applied to any problem. So let's, uh, let's hear these questions and see if we think that this guy's onto something, or, or maybe, maybe we want to be onto something else. Let's see how this goes. Is there a new way to do it? 
Can you borrow or adapt? Can you give it a new twist? Do you merely need more of the same or less of the same? Is there a substitute? Can the parts be rearranged? What if we just do the opposite? And the last question, can ideas be combined? Now, I don't know if those can be applied to any problem or not, but those are, I think, some good, good questions to ask to whenever we're considering uh, just about anything. So we've been focusing on the mission of the church. We've been talking about how the mission of the church is to make disciples, about how Jesus Christ instructed us to share the good news, to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins, to uh, be witnesses uh, to, uh, to Jerusalem and Judea and out to the rest of the world. Our task as followers of Jesus Christ is to share the good news to the world. And uh, we've been uh, focusing in this series about doing that. And, and I've shared that, that I think that, that a good strategy for sharing the good news is, is in this verse in 1 Peter. It's 1 Peter 3. 3.15, and 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Some translations say, Always be ready to give an answer for the hope that, that is in you. The verse starts with... with Hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. And we, we start, I think all of us, you know, our ability, our capacity to witness to the good news starts with us having a relationship with Christ. I don't know that it's until we, we've accepted Christ, ask God to forgive us of our sins, ask Christ into our heart, that we then have the capacity to share the, the good news. Although, although I'm not going to say you couldn't, but I think it starts there. And certainly as you, as you use this verse as a guide for sharing and for witnessing, that's where it starts. It starts with Jesus Christ in our heart. It starts with us setting aside our hearts and having Jesus Christ in our heart. It, it, it tells us to be ready. We talked a little bit about this last week, about being ready by spending, spending time in prayer, spending time in the scriptures, spending time in praising, singing, spending time offering thanks, uh, being ready. And, and then, and then and what we're ready to do, it tells us to be ready to make a defense, ready to give an answer for the, the hope that is in our life. And that is the question that we're going to focus on today. The question, while not stated in the verse, it's implied in the verse, why do we have hope? Why do we have hope in our life? And that's the question that the verse tells us to be ready to answer. To be ready to answer. So that as, as we hope to be witnesses, as we plan to be witnesses, one of the things I think that is helpful for us to do is to meditate and think about what our answer is to the question of where the hope comes from in our life. And I mean, the short answer is Jesus. But, but I think it's helpful for us to, to unpack our experience with Christ, our encounter with Christ, how, how we came to know Christ as we offer this answer. So, so today we're focusing on a question. Our world is full of questions. There are so many questions. I, I did an internet search and just a quick look at the internet suggests that adults ask 119 questions every day. You know, 119 seems to be a lot of questions to me, but maybe I'm just not curious. <laughs> and, and, and I thought, you know, it is from the internet, and so I'm not saying that this is, this is real or not real, but it's certainly a place for us to start. And so it might be that as we live out our days, we could kind of check mark every time we ask a question, every time we answer a question, and see if we wind up being over 119, under 119. The internet also suggests that children ask 73 questions a day. 
I will tell you that they weren't accounting for three-year-olds in this answer. <laughs> Being a father of four, I can guarantee you our, our kids, when they were in their, their late twos, early threes, they were asking many more questions than just 70, 73. Now, perhaps if it's the same question, it doesn't count. It only gets counted <laughs> once. I don't know. But if you counted each question, we were way into it seemed like the thousands every day. But, uh, but that's okay. But, you know, many of the game shows that we like or that are popular have to do with questions or maybe answers, depending on how you look at that. And, and many of us are, uh, are naturally curious. And there's all different kinds of questions. You know, when the, when the idea of questions comes up, it makes me think, of pop quizzes. And one of the most memorable pop quizzes that happened when I was in high school was in government. And, and, and I was, uh, I don't know that I studied well, but I was always and almost always able to pass a pop quiz. That doesn't mean I did very well on the pop quiz, but I would pass the pop quiz. And so we were in government, it was senior year in high school, and it was early in the semester. This must have been the second week. And, and the government professor, prof the government teacher in high school, her name was Mrs. Habit. She did a pop quiz. I passed the pop quiz. I don't remember the grade, but I passed it. But but you could tell you could tell from the wailing that was going on during the quiz, and the even louder wailing that was going on as the quizzes were handed back, that many of the students in the class did not do well on this quiz. And then and then Mrs. Habit. Um, I'm not sure why she did this, and we could speculate after church maybe, but she made the announcement. She said, okay, for those of you who are athletes, I have shared these quiz, quiz results with the coaches, and they want to talk to you about them when you get to practice today. And uh, I don't know if that means the same thing today that it meant back then when I was in high school, but the athletes even groaned louder than they had before because Coach Newton was going to visit with them about Mrs. Habit's pop quiz at practice. And, and the text that we're looking at today from Luke 18 also has a question. And so, so Luke 18:18, 18, 18, a certain ruler asked Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And you know, this is a question I think that all of us ask and we may not use these words, we may use different words, but we all, deep within ourselves, want to know what is it that I need to do so that I can be made right with God, so that God and I can be on good terms. I think that's another way to say this question. What must I do so that I can be right with God? And I think that's a question all of us ask. We were all created by God, and I believe that there's a place inside each one of us that only God can fill. And so many in our world are trying to live their lives. They're trying to find hope in, in things, in places, in people that hope cannot be found. The only place that hope is available is in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And that's, why, that's what God wants us to do, is to help to provide that answer to folks who are looking for hope and not finding it, when God provides the answer for those of us here who have come to know God. Jesus responds to this ruler, and Jesus says, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. And then Jesus goes on, You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. So Jesus, in answering the question, offers up a, a, a subset of the Ten Commandments. It says, you know, if you've been doing these, you should be in pretty good shape. You should be in pretty good shape. And the ruler, and, and this ruler goes on and tells Jesus, well, I, I've done all of those. I, I've done all those. I've kept them all. Since my youth. And then Jesus goes on and tells the ruler. Jesus goes on and says. There's one thing lacking. Sell all that you own. Distribute all the money to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. And the, and the Bible tells us that when he heard this. 
he became sad because he was very rich. Now, I don't know that this becomes a requirement for all of us to sell all that we have. I, I, I want to say that this was, you know, for me even, I want to say this was specific for that guy at that time. But here's the thing. If there's anything in our life that's more important to us than God, I would think that Jesus' answer to us would be that needs to go. If there's anything in our life that's more important to us than God, And that's something that needs to go if we're to have the relationship with God that God wants us to have. Now, there were folks paying attention and over listening to what was going on. And as Jesus has this encounter with the ruler, they, they asked the question. They asked the question, then who can be saved? And Jesus responds, what is impossible for mortals is possible for God. One of, one of the, the strategies that some of us have to be made right with God is we think that we can do it on our own. We think that if I can just be good enough, or if I can just do enough of this, or do enough of that, or do enough of the other, then, then God will accept me. But there's actually nothing we can do to make ourselves right with God. The reason that we can be made right with God is because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Christ's death and Christ's resurrection, that's why, that's how we can be made right with God. There's no other thing that we can do other than to accept the relationship that God has for us. The question that's at the heart of, of what we're wanting to answer, especially as we look at 1 Peter 3.15 is kind of a roadmap for how we can witness. The question is this, why is there hope in your life? Why is there hope in my life? Why is there hope in your life? That's the question that the verse tells us to be ready to answer. And I think the answer for, for us is Christ is the answer. But hopefully as, as we work out an answer that's in our own words, that speaks to our faith journey and our path we will it will help us get there i've been suggesting in this series uh, words to use in our conversations to offer opportunities for us to witness and share the good news and so each week of this series I, I i've suggested a word that we can use as we share our faith the first week i suggested the word jesus jesus and, and i shared how in my life I can go day after day after day. Too many days in a row happen that I do not say the name Jesus out loud in conversation. It's not something that comes natural to me. I, I would guess that it may not be something that comes natural for many of us. But, but I think in my own mind, and I would suggest, if we could find a way to say Jesus in, in a way that's appropriate in our conversations, that this would give us opportunities to talk about our faith journey. It would help people to know that Jesus is important to us. And so that is one word I would encourage us to use more in our day-to-day -day conversation. Last week, the word I offered is blessed. Blessed. Blessed is, is a word that means content. It means happy. And, and, and blessed is a word that can apply to us in any circumstance we're experiencing. Because blessed is, is, is a condition that comes from God. It's given to us from God. And if we can offer to others that we are blessed, it can give us the opportunity to share how our blessings come from God. And the circumstances with which we are living are, are, are given to us from God, whether they're good, whether they're bad, whether they're easy, hard, God has the capacity to bless us in any circumstance we may face. The word I want to, to offer for today is grateful, grateful or, or thankful. Uh, I, I think that any time that we offer thanks, it is, it is a recognition that, that we are not necessarily on our own. You know, when we say that we're thankful or when we offer thanks, 
It's often because something has happened for us or to us that's helped our situation from what it was. You know, the Bible in 1 Thessalonians 5 tells us to in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I know sometimes when I read that verse, I struggle because there, there are things that happen that I would just soon not give thanks for. But what the verse says is everything. And, and, and so sometimes even when I struggle, I try to get myself over to the place where, okay, I don't want to. But maybe even when I don't understand, I'm thankful. Because in the end, that is God's will for us in Christ Jesus, according to 1 Corinthians 5, 18. So there was a, a Peanuts comic strip. Lucy is feeling sorry for herself. She says, my life is a drag. I'm completely fed up. I've never felt so low in my life. Her little brother Linus is trying to console her. He says, Lucy, when you're in a mood like this, you should try to be to think of things you have to be thankful for. In other words, count your blessings. To that, Lucy says, Ha! That's a good one. I could count my blessings on one finger. I've never had any, and I never will have any. I don't get half the breaks that other people do. Nothing ever goes right for me. And you talk about counting your blessings. You talk about being thankful. What do I have to be thankful for? I can almost see Lucy doing this. Linus responds. Well, for one thing, you have a little brother who loves you. And with that, Lucy runs to Linus. And as she has tears of joy, she hugs him tightly, and Linus says, every now and then, I say the right thing. I hope for all of us that God will provide opportunities for us to witness. And, and I know that, that that is a struggle for, for us, and I hope that as we kind of work our way into it, maybe, maybe the words I've suggested to use will help, maybe not. But you know, there, there are, are days when I run into people and when I have conversation with folks, and, and based on the, the, the way the conversation goes, I get this feeling inside myself that this was an appointment ordained by God for me to talk to someone about an issue maybe that they're having in their life. And, and I hope for all of us that we will have more and more opportunities to have faith conversations that will lead to us sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news that God loves everyone, and God wants to be in a relationship with everyone. John 14, 15 says, Jesus is saying, if you love me, you will obey what I command. If you love me, you will obey what I command. So I hope all of us will be getting ready, getting ready to have an answer for the reason that there's hope in our life, that, that we will be getting ready by, by spending time in prayer, by spending time reading and doing what the Bible tells us to do, by drawing closer to God as we live our lives, that we will be ready by getting ready by trying to work these words into our conversations. Jesus, blessed, grateful, or, or maybe you'll want to come up with some of your own words, and that would be great too, but just words of faith that, that perhaps can lead to a conversation about, about faith. In 1 Peter 3.15, but in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting 
of the hope that is in you. Let's pray. Lord God, help us to be faithful to the mission that you have given to us. Help us, Lord God, to make disciples. Help us, Lord God, to witness and proclaim the good news that repentance and forgiveness of sins is available to any and all who would call upon you. Help us, Lord God, to be your people following Jesus Christ. And we ask this in our Savior's name. Amen. We're receiving our offering at plates, the one in the back, two here on the rail. There's one in the office. We have a rail offering this month, and we're giving our, our rail offering for July is going to the Lakeview Methodist camp up near Palestine. Uh, that's a ministry that uh, has helped so many over the years, and we want to be supporters of that. Um, if you would mail an offering to our church, it's Post Office Box 267, Norman G, Texas, 77871. I invite the congregation to stand, and let's sing together the doxology. Praise God for all blessings flow. Praise Him all. today is answer the call that God places on our life. I think God calls everybody. And I think there's something special that God wants each one of us to do. Our invitation, our hymn of commitment is softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling.
and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you the gift of his peace. All this we ask in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.